My colleague would like to compliment. I would like to give a personal um, analysis on investigative journalism, and this shouldn't be attributed to anybody else but me. Uh, well, when you look at investigative journalism, first of all, I think the way you look at it should be contextualized as well. And I think that looking at Rwanda, its size, small, but well-organized, government very proactive, I think when I was working with the radio, I used to compete with the police and the military for information or leads or scoops. Why? Because the government here is so organized. They are so proactive. And you know, investigative, you investigate something that is hidden. It's very hard, I think, in Rwanda to hide something because of the smallness of Rwanda, but also proactiveness of the government apparatus. This is my personal opinion. It's very hard to hide. It's very hard. They, they, um, the moment you start investigating corruption, the police has already acted. So I, I don't know, but that's uh, maybe food for thought uh, because the way, uh, compared to other big countries where there's a lot of corruption and maybe the government is not proactive, and I'm not trying to name any countries, but I think Rwanda is quite unique in terms of size, but also in terms of how, how government is proactive and how it is present everywhere, such that it's very, it becomes very difficult to hide something that could become uh, a, uh, um, a candidate for investigative journalism. That's my take. I think I want to disagree with Clemar. <laughs> because the reason the access to information law was passed was to promote some of these forms of journalism that we want. And I, can, I, and I think everybody agrees with me. Because that's why access to information was highly passed and it was a law that came to open up. Now talk about data journalism. I think this is one of the skills that we lack among our journalists. And probably this doesn't require financial issues. It, it's all about laziness. And this is very important in giving information to the police as they lead to investigate corruption or run the investigative bureau. Uh, this is very important to the government to promote accountability. So whatever the case, we need investigative journalism that operates on access to information law because if we don't exploit that law, then it is in vain. That's why probably Lydia was saying that if we don't use the access to information law as media, how shall we transform Africa? And yet, when you talk about Africa's transformation, we are talking about good governance, accountability. And I believe this was the very instance of having these laws being promoted as we celebrate the Windhoek Declaration that brought about the Africa of Information. This, this is all about what they wanted. So besides having great institutions uh, that are operating, that are doing their job perfectly in Rwanda, we still need this form of journalism so that it can complement to the good work that is being done. I also want to make a brief comment on uh, Mr. Arthur's uh, brave kind of analysis of self-censorship compared to media freedom and the differences that we see. Indeed, briefly, everybody would... Because yes, you're running briefly. out of time. Yeah, yes. briefly. <laughs> I want to talk about external and internal forces that could be influencing media freedom. Today, I don't believe that external forces are the major hindrance to the freedom of the media, like say politicians calling the media do this or do that, or the absence of the laws. It is rather the internal forces that are highly affecting the media. The conflict between business and editorial. You come up with a story and we've been receiving most of these complaints, and probably the business manager would say, what if this story comes out? Shall we ever have an advert from MTN? Think twice. 
So such a kind of uh, scenarios have been reported to us, and we've had situations whereby some journalists have even uh, been affected by their contracts. So it is important that we work on the internal forces. Probably the 77.1% will go up to either 90% in the next uh, barometer. That's what I wanted to highlight. Uh, with Buhura, who's talked about the issue of everybody coming in the profession, uh, I think that's not right. Uh, because whoever comes to this profession, if he's accredited, there is a process. Unless you serve without an accreditation uh, card or press card. Uh, saying that we have primary levers in the profession, I think that is a lie. Our statistics reveal that over 80% of our journalists are graduates. So I think uh, probably what you wanted to mention is something different, but not that that is trying to advance. Well, thank you very much. I don't know if I have a few seconds for you to give us your closing remarks. Two seconds, your closing remarks as we sum up, because I see my colleague Novella. Is yeah, I appreciate awakened. the fact that uh, our free freedom of expression is above 90%, because every other right that a person would exercise would depend on freedom of expression and access to information. So if we have these rates that are so high at this level, then the atmospheric pressure of our media, which the barometer is trying to reveal, I think is headed to the best position. Thank you. Clema, your closing remarks? Uh, congratulations again to RGB for, for the work. Well done. 72 is quite impressive. Uh, but there are areas, of course, to improve. And I, I really wanted to challenge the professor, but maybe another time, especially on gender, on promotion of gender equality, where it is 77.2%, and uh, so-called gender expert, I really want to challenge that in a different forum, where media houses, I'm happy I'm looking at Arthur, please, media houses, have gender policies, your internal gender policies, how you manage gender issues. Please, it's a challenge. I'm, I'm, I'm concluding by that. And we are happy, the Swedish Embassy is very happy to partner with RGB and whoever is promoting um, uh, freedom of expression, but all media freedoms, but also evidence-based uh, media development. Thank you, Klima. Peacemaker. Uh, thank you. I would like to appreciate the work well done. And uh, as the Media Council, we are more than ready to give our contribution. And this uh, tool, this instrument, will guide us in terms of uh, planning as far as the media capacity building is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> Thank you very much. I wind up by going back to Karadi's issue of sub journalists being paid by commission which in the end influences the kind of stories that are written. There was an issue that came out, the issue of editorial boards. Some people are saying they are not doing their job the way they're supposed to be done. And this actually concurs with, again, Mr. Asimwe's issue of going back and find out to what extent are the editorial boards doing their job or their impact to the quality of stories. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please give them a round of applause as we close down our session and hand back to Novella. I know I saw a couple of hands up, but please let's keep the conversation going on social media. As you know, it is one of the informing platforms. So yes, feel free to tweet, tag them, and ask them these questions. Thank you very much, Novella. I hand it back to you. Thank you. Let's have, a, sorry. Let's have a warm round of applause for the panelists and the moderators. I think as highlighted by the moderator, this is just the start of the conversation. And those are conversations that have to be ongoing to ensure that we are able not only to continue working and trying to look for profits, but at the same time evaluate and assess the work and the content that we're providing. Uh, to um, uh, the public and to the beneficiaries in general. Uh, I would like, without further ado, to welcome Honorable Judith Wizeye, who's 
um, the minister um, uh, in uh, the president, the office of the president, uh, as our guest of honor this morning. And just after that, we'll be having uh, the group photo uh, here in front. Uh, just after that, to conclude with a coffee break. Thank you. They didn't want me to, to speak. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it has been raining since morning, and I have been hearing saying that uh, raining is a blessing. So blessed I'm a journalist today. But those who are here. Thank you. Um, distinguished guests, members of the diplomatic corps, invited, in, uh, invited guests from outside, civil society representatives, the acting CEO Rwanda Governance Board, dear journalists, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It gives me a pleasure to be with you this morning as we celebrate the African Day of Information. It is a time to consider the status of media sector in Rwanda as presented to us as the 2018 Rwanda Media Barometer that we are here to launch today. As we gather to celebrate the Africa Day of Information under the theme Africa's transformation, the role of access to information. Let's be reminded that the pursuit of the African we want through Agenda 2063 demands that the manner in which Africa is reported changes. The African media has an important role in creating the narrative as the Africa we want continues to unfold. Telling the truth, telling the true African stories is a fundamental in transforming our continent. Our citizens take a center stage in delivering to this African ambition. Access to information is critical for enabling citizens to exercise their voice to effectively monitor and hold the governments to account and above all to enter into informed dialogue about the decisions which affect their lives. Access to information therefore empowers citizens to claim their rights, 
contributes to good governance and transparency. Distinguished participants, for a transformative media sector, it is imperative to enhance the, comp the competencies of media practitioners as well as creating a legal environment in which access to information is eased. Policy and legal reforms, including the creation of institutions to enhance the capacity of media practitioners, account for the progress registered. It is in the spirit of promoting excellence and professionalism in the media sector, sector that we will this evening through the Development Journalism Awards celebrate the journalists, media houses, and practitioners that emerged the winners through public voting and competitive competitions. Let me take this opportunity to thank the organizers of this event, especially Rwanda Governance Board, One UN Rwanda, the Association of Journalists, the Media High Council, the Rwanda Media Self Regulatory Body, RURA, and all other institutions that supported this function in one way or another. The key reasons the government chose to rapidly reform the media sector was to promote accountability and foster public engagement. Distinguished participants, from 2018, Rwanda Media Barometer findings that have just been presented, noticeable progress has been made on the indicator on access to information for citizens. It's the most improved indicator as it is scored 65.9.8 percent in, in 2016 and 76.4 percent in 2018. It's also important to note that indicators on freedom of expression, media availability and access to information for citizens, as well as public trust in media were highlighted in some of the best performing, which is a testimony of much improved operating environment of the media sector in Rwanda. I would like to once again thank Rwanda Governance Board, the Office of the Ombudsman, Self-Regulatory Body, and Rariga for organizing awareness campaigns on the importance of embracing the access to information law, which contributed to the improvement of the indicator. Although the indicator improved, I'm aware that um, there are some places where journalists still report that they find it difficult to access information. We will continue to work with the concerned institutions to make sure that access to information is respected by all concerned parties. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to note that Rwanda 
Media Barometer is a homegrown tool that gauges the taste of media development in the country. Since its inception, it has helped in generating scientific evidence of the trend of media development and the challenges therein. I have noted with appreciation the recommendation focused on enhancing the economic capacity of journalists through putting in place a credit and savings scheme that will help them to improve their businesses as well as their welfare. The government will give its full support as soon as the savings and credit scheme is formed. However, there is a need to do more to raise the, standard, the standards and uh, for achieving quality content and compliance with the professional codes and conduct. The event this evening that we recognize excellence in journalism and the public appreciation of the services journalists and media houses offer to citizens is an important event that creates a culture of competitiveness and excellence that leads to quality work. I wish all the competitors in the Development Journalist Award 2018 the best of their luck. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to thank journalists for their dedication to serve the public and their commitment to uphold the principles of journalistic ethics, truthfulness, fairness, accuracy, balanced neutrality, without which there is no professional journalism. I wish to congratulate RGB and their partners for organizing the 2018 Africa Day of Information celebrations. With these remarks, I'm glad to hereby declare the launch of Rwanda Media Barometer 2018 and to officially open the Africa Day of Information Engagements and Celebrations. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Asante sana. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. And thank you especially for not only launching uh, the Rwanda uh, Media Barometer 2018, but also opening officially uh, this gathering of the Africa Day of Information. I would like to probably invite all of us, uh, convey all of us for a group photo to officially, let's say, have a picture to remember uh, the launch of the Rwanda Media Barometer. I think the team is helping us to make sure that we have all the needful. And just after that, we'll, I will invite you for a coffee break, a slight coffee break. Again, we have incurred a, a slight delay uh, in the program, but uh, we'll have a 20 minutes uh, coffee break and be back and seated uh, by uh, 12.30 for the proceedings of the day. May I all invite you to come forth, thank you. Yeah. 